In a decision that allows Americans to reflect both on the fact that taxation is not just extortion and theft, but that it also breaches the Fourth Amendment's promise of privacy against searches without warrants, Judge Mark Pittman of the U.S. District Court for the Northwest District of Texas, July 10th, issued an injunction against enforcement of a federal tax statute that has effectively banned the making of home distilled moonshine for the last 156 years. It's an important ruling for many people, and the decision could have wider implications for home hobbyists. Hi everyone, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV, and here's the story. Entitled Hobby Distillers Association et al. The Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau et al. This case revolved around four of the Hobby Distillers Association's 1,300 members who filed suit in December against the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau and the Department of Justice. They argued that the government's regulation through the tax code reach could not extend to activities within a person's home. The ban is a consequence of legal lines within this 156-year-old tax on home distilled spirits, lines that allow the alcohol and tobacco tax thugs to claim jurisdiction over what kinds of home setups people make for their distilling and, of course, to claim the power to inspect and prevent any such distillery from starting, even if it is for home use. In other words, the tax agency is allowed to breach the Fourth Amendment and shut down anyone, even though those people aren't selling the liquid they distill, meaning that they wouldn't have any sale for which the government could grab a tax. You can wrestle with that head scratcher. And of course, it turns out that Judge Pittman wrestled with that very head scratcher as well. The illogic and anti-rights aspect of the old statute came to mind. And he too found big problems with this. And certainly, he didn't go all the way to recognize the immorality of taxation on the basic abstract level, but he made many key constitutional and logical points. As Fox News' Landon Mayon notes, the judge focused on one plaintiff, a New Jersey man named Scott McNutt. He also is a member of the Texas-based Hobby Distillers Association, but he is in New Jersey. And McNutt, get this, got a letter from the government goons telling him they suspected he had purchased materials that might allow him to make his own home booze. Quote, McNutt received an unsolicited letter from the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau that said he faced potential civil and criminal liability after the government learned he may have purchased materials that could be used to distill spirits. The Department of Justice claims the ban was a valid measure created by Congress to protect the substantial revenue the government raises from taxing distilled spirits by limiting where plants could be located, end quote. Are they gonna apply that to home gardeners as well? Now, to his discredit, Judge Pittman didn't address the clear violation of the Fourth Amendment that this represents. But he did range into constitutional ground when it comes to this federal taxation agency claiming an a priori power to block the creation of a home distillery and, of course, he looked at how the Interstate Commerce Clause of the Constitution, which is in Article 1, Section 8, wasn't designed to allow for this kind of deep interference in private activity. Writes Mayan, quote, Pittman, however, said the ban was not a valid practice of Congress's taxing power because it did not raise revenue and did nothing more than statutorily ferment a crime, end quote. Yes, I think we understand the pun, Judge. Continuing, quote, 
While prohibiting the possession of an at-home still meant to distill beverage alcohol might be convenient to protect tax revenue on spirits, those being sold in stores, it's not a sufficiently clear corollary to the positive power of laying and collecting taxes, the judge wrote." End quote. In other words, the taxing agency cannot claim the power to block the creation of one's own distillery for one's own use and not for sale simply because the government argues that the making of one's own booze might cut into the sales of the alcohol in stores that the government officially taxes. <laughs> oh man. And Mayan also notes two critical aspects of Judge Pittman's injunction. Pittman determined that this had nothing to do with interstate commerce and that, as we have seen with the Supreme Court's recent clampdown on the so-called Chevron standard of deference to regulatory agencies creating their own new powers, any attempt to claim this control over home moonshine is regulatory in effect and it is an unauthorized expansion similar to this now defunct Chevron foolishness. Quote, the judge said the ban on at-home distilling could also not be covered under Congress's power to regulate interstate commerce. He said the ban is not a comprehensive scheme of regulation because there are many aspects of the alcohol industry that Congress has left untouched." End quote. Now, one of the key provisions of Judge Pittman's decision appears on page 13, where he states this about the federal taxation and approval to operate provision of this old U.S. statute. Quote, Subsection A1A requires the applicant for a distilling permit to truthfully describe the proposed premises for the operation, and it allows the secretary to prescribe such regulations on the location, construction, arrangement, and protection of the premises as he deems necessary to facilitate inspection and afford adequate security to the revenue. And subsection A1C allows the secretary to retroactively approve any existing plant that predates the statute if he deems that such location, construction, arrangement, and method of operation will afford adequate security to the revenue." End quote. Ah, there's nothing like claiming power over people, huh? As Katherine Richardson notes for Daily Caller, quote, President Jimmy Carter signed a law that legalized home brewing in 1978, but distilling spirits at home remained illegal, end quote. And it remained illegal because the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau claimed the power to allow or not allow people to make their own spirits. Not only that, as we can see in McNutt's case, the government claimed the power to breach privacy even on the level of store purchases for anything that could be associated with home distilling. Judge Pittman has put a 14-day delay on his injunction against the continued enforcement of this old statute because he's allowing this delay to let the government on the federal side bring an appeal to the federal appeals court level. But his ruling though it doesn't go deep enough into the immorality of government taxation or claims of so-called regulation, his ruling does show promise for other hobbyists, including people who use 3D printers and those who make their own drones for recreation, and of course, people who might have their own chickens or have their own gardens. It shouldn't be up to the agents of the state to tell anyone that they can trade or not trade on a market level at all. That's the first point. But at least on this internal, personal, home use level, Judge Pittman's ruling cracks a long-standing stone that has blocked personal freedom for a lot of people. And of course, it has implications for many more. One can only hope that we can see this crack widen so more people understand what's going on and more people can be free. 
Thanks for watching, everyone. Please remember to like and subscribe. Find us on Rumble where they don't censor us. Please follow us there and share the videos with as many people as you possibly can think of. And of course, find us on YouTube where, yes, they do censor us. Uh, still. And double check that you're still subscribed there. Find us all the time at mrctv.org. mrctv.org. Check out the big fundraiser that's happening and you can participate in that as well. And check out the MRCTV store as well as what the whole team is doing. You can find us on Instagram, on TikTok, on Parler, on Facebook, on Twitter slash X, and if you want to find me on Gab, I'm at Gardner Goldsmith on Gab, and on Twitter slash X, which is right over here, that's at Guard Goldsmith. Thanks for watching, everyone. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith. I want to invite you as my guest on a very special, once in a lifetime, seven day post-election cruise in the Caribbean. Caribbean. It's going to be a blast.